some days you just can't make it to the archery range for whatever reason. And I have a great tool that is by far the best tool that is available to train at home or on your own when you can't make it to the archery range. Now in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up and adjust an Astra Shot Trainer. I'm gonna also show you how to use it properly. Uh, and basically what this tool is going to do is going to allow you to shoot in your home, outside like I am today, or somewhere else when you really just can't get arrows in. Some days you can't make it to the range and this tool will really, really make a big difference in your archery game. A couple of quick benefits to this tool is it really makes sure that you maintain back tension throughout the shot and really make sure that you finish the shot when the shot ends after follow through, not when you release the string and definitely not when the clicker clicks. For those of you that are new here, my name is Jay Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery. I'm working to make this channel a great resource to all types of archery from form to tuning, arrow setup, uh, strength training videos, all sorts of things to help make you a better archer. So if you wouldn't mind, start by hitting that subscription button and the notification bell. That way you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. Pumping out tons of content lately and you really don't want to miss out on what I've got coming up. You're watching the Jay Kaminsky YouTube channel. So before we get started, I'm going to point out the obvious. There is new apparel available. Uh, right below this video, there should be a little slider that's uh, showing that shows a bunch of the new designs. You can also go to my website, jkaminsky.com, or click on the link below or a link up at the top here as well to get some of these new designs that James helped me out with. They are absolutely amazing. This one is a different rendition on what's available out there besides just the I am and the type of archer you are because, you know, I'm a barebow shooter now, so... I've got to uh, overshadow the recurve shooter uh, today, but I am going to be using my recurve bow, so I guess that doesn't really count today. Um, I just really want to show you how to properly use this uh, Astra Shot Trainer, and doing it with a clicker and a sight pin and all that stuff is really important to be using. You can use this as a bare bow shooter as well. So what is an Astra Shot Trainer? Essentially, you slide your arm into the sleeve. These straps are isolated around your elbow, and then it is tied with a carabiner to the string directly to your bowstring. And so what you can do is you actually get to come to full draw and the clicker clicks and you shoot as, as if you are actually shooting your bow. And what this is doing is tying the string, the bowstring directly to your elbow, um, but there is a little bit of slack there. So when you let go, you are starting your follow through and then it catches you and wants to pull you forward with all of the draw weight that you had when you were at full draw. So if you're not maintaining your back tension through the shot, it's really gonna be apparent um, when you relax your muscles and your back uh, while using this tool. This uh, Astra Shot Trainer is available in links in the description below, plus I'll put a card up at the top here. It's available on my website and I would absolutely recommend picking one up. Uh, this is light years ahead as far as some of the other tools that were similar to this on the market. It's way more comfortable, it's a lot easier to use, and ultimately it just doesn't tear your arm or your equipment up. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to set this up. Uh, first thing, you disconnect your uh, carabiner from the actual sleeve. You slide your sleeve on where you have the padded area on your tricep. Obviously, you put the big end in first. Uh, it's got this nice little V here. You want that in the crook of your elbow. So once you've got it all the way up, you can see in the instep or the crook of my elbow, there's that little diamond pattern. So that's when you know it's in just about the best spot. And you can see how the padded strap, the bigger strap's on the back side, and the other strap is on the front side here. And the loose area is in the middle. Next, you will take the actual strap itself. And what you're going to use is you're gonna use the paracord area. And you're basically just gonna do a loop through just below your bottom knocking point. So you basically take your string and you slip the entire assembly through it and you loop it and cinch it down just underneath your bottom knocking point. Once you do that, then you will take your bow and set it in front of you just like you're going to shoot. Take your carabiner or the hook and you clip it into the inside of your elbow. So now everything is attached and you are now directly attached to the bow through your elbow. Now the next thing that's extremely important is you have to set this slack length up properly. If you have too much, uh, it's really not gonna work out for you. It's not gonna be very pleasant to use. Um, might be 
uh, a bit painful actually. So you have to make sure it's set up correctly. It's actually very simple. All you do is you essentially don't hold onto your bowstring, come to full draw and anchor without uh, you know the arrow on the bow. And you can see how I've got maybe three, four inches in front of my jaw here. That's way too much. What you really should have is somewhere in the neighborhood of three quarters of an inch to an inch. So luckily it's got this nice strap. You just can pull it tighter. And as I come to full draw, it's still about two inches. So I'm gonna shorten that up just a little bit more. Come to full draw. And so now I'm right in that one inch range. So that's just about optimal. I'm gonna check it real quick. Yeah, that feels pretty good. So right about that inch uh, when you're at full draw and you have that full tension because it's crushing into your arm, um, it makes a big difference. Right here, you can see that it's actually not in front of my fingers at all. But once I pull back, because everything stretches, it's now in front of my fingertips. <clears throat> okay, so definitely you don't really actually need an arm guard because you're not releasing the string fully. Don't really need a finger sling because we're not letting the bow swing. It still is in full connection to us. However, you do still need a finger tab. So you can just use the finger tab that you normally use. And then you wanna make sure you're using your arrows, obviously, with your clicker. And I absolutely would recommend shooting, doing this while shooting at a target. Now, the reason that this um, is important is because many people will have kind of a target panic type of uh, symptom or syndrome with a recurve bow, um, especially when they're aiming at a target. So even though you can do this really good while not aiming at a target, it's gonna be a bit more challenging to do while aiming at a target. So I always recommend to do it at a target. Bonus points if you can do this at the uh, target distance that you prefer to shoot at, like at 70 meters or 20 yards, depending on the game that you're shooting uh, you know, recently. Uh, this is just set up for this video, so it's not an actual target that I shoot at at this distance. Um, but anyway, finger tab, you have everything attack, attached, grab your arrow. It's a little limiting, so you gotta get used to loading your bow with a strap on your elbow. Again, you can see the loop is looped just below the knock. Um, and basically all you do is you shoot your normal shot. So what the goal is, is to make sure that when you're shooting, you're maintaining your tension and direction through release and follow through all the way to the end of the finish. So I'm gonna show you a couple of shots and then we're gonna discuss um, how it looks. So you see after those couple of shots, uh, the arrows don't go very far. Um, I know many people have done this and I have included um, doing this in my room, uh, in my dorm room when I lived at the Olympic Training Center and I just hung a bed sheet on the, uh, the bunk beds. And so that way the arrows would just hit the sheet and fall down. They're not going fast enough to actually penetrate and hurt anything. They will puncture drywall though, so still don't do that. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing this on a concrete floor because your arrow points are gonna be falling on them obviously. So a carpeted area is definitely best um, if you can't do it outside like I am today. Now, as you can see, those shots, as I shoot the arrow, the string is starting to move forward and then it is caught. And then I continue to pull back until that string comes back to my face again, while, just like I was at full draw. So what that's doing is making sure that I'm maintaining my back tension all the way through until I finish, which is not when I release the string. So I'll shoot a couple more shots here for you to see up close. So you can see the action. And you can see when I let go, when I let go, the string jumps forward, but then I continue to pull until that string comes back to my chin again. So make sure you pay attention to that this shot. So again, you can see that I'm making sure my back tension is continuing. Now, what I'm gonna show you here is how to not do your form master. Now, this video was recorded many years ago on a really junky point and shoot camera. So the video quality is really not that good. 
Um, but basically what it is, this is a top level uh, Japanese shooter that came to the Olympic Training Center. And um, this is the first time he shot the Foremaster. He watched us and the whole team watched us do it. And he wanted to try it. So we didn't quite tell him how to actually do it um, at all. He just put it on and tried shooting a couple arrows. And as you can see, he did not maintain back tension through release and follow through. Despite looking very good while shooting, it is not quite maintaining your back tension through release and follow through. So what this will do is you're going to feel after you take this off and shoot a couple shots that your release is way more explosive uh, on the follow through because before what you were doing is relaxing and, re and actually losing your back tension through release and follow through. So I'm going to do a high speed video now and so that way you can uh, see what it ends up looking like. So you can see how much that can really show you how much or little back tension you are maintaining through the shot. And it's a very simple tool. It's very affordable and it's really great for times when you just can't make it to the range or you can't actually shoot. You know, you could do something like this in your bedroom, in your garage at home, put down some carpet, stick a target on the wall, something like that to help simulate aiming at a target and you're shooting just as much and there's just as much energy that you're exerting when you're actually shooting the bow. And the best thing, about this design is this carabiner. What I, what I can do is I can unhook it, set it down, and now I'm disconnected. I can set my bow down, go retrieve my arrows, put them back in my quiver, and do it again. And uh, now you can see where the arrows have landed. They're all relatively within the same space. You want to see them be about the same distance from you uh, because if you don't, that means you're changing how much pressure or how quickly you're coming off the string. So that's gonna affect that. And ultimately your goal is you want to be about a meter to two meters from you is about how far that arrow should travel. Uh, if it's traveling a lot further than that, you're either losing your back tension through the shot or you have that slack adjusted to be way too long. And even this, I think my slack was a little bit too long. That one inch may have been just a bit, a bit too much and three quarters of an inch probably would have been more acceptable. Now, how often would I shoot the Astra Shot Trainer? It really depends. Um, as if you can't shoot, you might as well shoot it just like your regular bow, uh, shoot a fair amount of arrows. You know, you could do this for a, a good long while until you get really tired. Although you will fatigue quicker than actually shooting archery, obviously, because you're doing a bit more, uh, work. Um, but definitely there's some benefits to doing this before your training as well for the day. So doing it before you go shoot, shoot maybe 10, 15 arrows, shoot a dozen arrows while aiming at a target, take it all off and then do the day's training. And then afterwards, it might be a good idea to revisit it as well to make sure you maintained your back tension the entire day and to really try to train and reinforce maintaining that back tension, maintaining that tension and direction all the way through release and follow through. Thanks for watching and thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter or check out books, apparel, and some seminar info, head to jkaminski.com and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you again.